let's continue with example number two. We already saw the example number one of sensible heat. If you miss it, go check it out. And if you're following through, we're going to be speaking about the same amount of copper, 5.43 kilograms. We don't know CP, but we do have the CV data. This is specific heat, specific heat capacity, how much heat that substance can, uh, let's say, store until it changes one Celsius. And we're talking about a open system. So probably we're going to be using this CP once again. But now they tell me the initial temperature. They are giving me this initial temperature. And you don't know the final temperature. And you don't know the change in temperature. But you know that we could check out this with my magic formula here. MCPDT. Okay. So they are telling me that the sun radiates or gives energy. And we're going to suppose that this 100% is going to be absorbed in the form of heat. Of course, that's not the case, but we're going to suppose that. And they give us this amount of power, which is 7,823.4 joules per hour. And they tell us that this copper wire or copper tube, whatever the, uh, the shape is, was three hours in the sun. So this might sound tricky, you might say it's either a continuous process or is it a batch process. We don't actually care, we're going to calculate the amount of heat in those three hours. So our base is going to be three hours. And from my equation, MCPDT, I'm going to use CP because it's an open system. And of course the atmosphere, I'm going to suppose it's one, atm uh, one atmosphere. And we need to solve for the change in temperature, so let me send this dividing which is here heat divided by mcp remember that when we talk about heat in this case it's the change on entropy and what else do we have here well we need one small detail guys this q right here we don't have it so we need to calculate it from the power they give us which is joules per hour and the amount of time the wire was exposed or the copper substance sample was exposed so it was three hours. So in three hours we got this, we need to multiply this, and you got this amount of joules, 23,470 joules, or 23.4 kilojoules, which make more sense. But anyways, let's do this once again, and let's do this equation, and you're going to have that, well, you need to change this to kilojoules and don't mix them, do this operation, cancel kilojoules with kilojoules, kilograms with kilograms, and you will get that the change on temperature is about 1 or 11 Celsius. So we knew that it was the initial temperature 25 Celsius, therefore I must have 25 Celsius plus the change in temperature that I should have with that amount of heat, which is 36 or the difference is 11, so I just add them up and my final temperature is going to be 36.2 Celsius. So it's simply the process. You have this sample of copper. The sun is going to shine. You're going to heat it uh, about 3 hours. This is going to increase in 11.2 Celsius. And, well, that's the essential problem. Know the final temperature, which is 36.2. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. So 
Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.